Uh, my, my name's Chad. I'm the founder of a company called Brickfest Live. We run live Lego events that attract tens of thousands of people okay, uh, each weekend. Awesome. We do. Yeah, it's cool. So our mission is to inspire, educate, and entertain. Um, you know the next generation of Lego builders because, you know, because that stuff. Because it's a big fucking industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and it wires your brain to problem solve, no which question. is what which is what we're all doing. Yeah. Right? Um, my question is actually more about what you do with this show and the people that you have around you to support it. How much of their time is spent on you as opposed to other things? All their time is spent on me. Okay. <laughs> the all entire right. so the entire team that's mixed in is all part of brand Gary team. All of it. Right. So that some of them have worked at VaynerMedia within VaynerMedia before and were Pluck, Steve, you know, India, you know, Alex plucked out of the machine onto the team and others have been, you know, cold hired just for it, Zach, Andrew, Giroc, Stefan for it. I, that's all awesome. Because we started actually on a YouTube channel. Yep. Where, you know, the, all the production was us. Yes. And and that's how that, my library TV was. But, of course. But with this, I have so much more scale. And as you can tell, what I'm doing is I'm producing so much more content off the show for Medium and all the distribution. So, and and I'm learning through these guys as they're actually now doing, they have D-Rock's theory, Andrew's being accounting, and he is taking photos. What I'm learning is, what does a production company look like for a human being? Mm -hmm. Right, Which what does it look like? It fucking like rad. This. Yeah. You know, and so I and I and I think that there's you gotta understand, there's you know, as well as I'm doing, there are a lot more successful people, wealthier, like there are that top three percent of celebrity that are way grossly overpaying their PR people, their managers, their boy from around the way that they're taking care of, like all that stuff that I think creates a really interesting business model of the future because I do believe, and you know this, every single person is a media company. I believe that cold. And so, not only am I producing, not only am I giving back to a community that's been in place and growing, but I'm getting to learn the infrastructure of how I would scale this if I wanted to do it for LeBron. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, bro. Cool. Thank you. Going. Hey. Chris Green from Massachusetts. Hey, Congratulations, Chris. 100 episodes. Ask Gary V. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Big up to D-Rock for that hustle video, one of the greatest videos I have ever seen. Let's hear it for D-Rock. So, Gary, you can talk about the hustle. You just said two questions ago, you can make any company successful. And I know you believe it. I know we all believe it. But when you can do so many different things, when your hustle can turn into so many different things with so many opportunities today, 2015, how do you choose what to do and what's your greatest opportunity cost to do what you're doing? This is the part that I'm not great at. I, I, you know, Many around me would argue that I've done a poor job in selecting opportunity costs because of the earlier question to the gal that pitched all this stuff of, you know, I'm playing such a long, my vulnerability, and I think I said it on one episode, but I'm not sure. My vulnerability is that I was too patient and I left the prime years on the table by giving back too much, by leveraging too much, by doing non-scalable things too much. And so it's something, you know, I turned 40 in November and much like when I turned 30 and freaked out at Wine Library and started Wine Library TV, I, def I think I'm forcing the narrative because I think it's convenient, but I'm definitely feeling weird. I, I'm not, I'd be lying if I wasn't. I've been spending a ton of time on, you, you know, and I'm sure I did, I don't really recall this, but I remember, but I actually do recall it. I, I remember thinking like, all right, 30 to 40 is gonna be the years where I lay down the foundation to buy the New York Jets, right? And so, you know, I've definitely been like, you know, 40 to 50, like this, this is it, right? And I'm sure when I get to 50, I'm like, this, this is really, it. you know, but I, Gary, yeah, I'll be honest with you, like I'm not sure that I'm the best guy for this answer because the truth is, I, uh, I like non-scalable things. I love doing stuff like this. Like, you gotta understand, at some level, and I think people eventually will figure this out about me, and I think a lot of people here probably do re recognize it. I disproportionately like people, which will then probably ultimately not allow me to maybe squeeze out every dollar, but I'm still gonna be much happier for it. Like, this show, like, I'm gonna watch this show. Like, hey, hold on, let me just talk to myself. 
you look terrible. Um, you know, that was me talking to my 90 year old self. Like, these things, like, it's funny when I come across somebody tweeting out, like, an episode of Wine Library TV from, like, 2006. Like, I do a ton of stuff that on um, black and white don't look like the smart opportunity cost play, but they're the things that make me happy as a human being. And just hustling for the cash of it or buying the jets is only one part of the equation for me. And so, um, I think, you know, from a business sense, I leave a lot on the table. From a life sense, I'm happy with my allocation of my time. I'm happy that I get together with former employees that I love so much, even though everybody around me will say, we need those 15 minutes for these 700 other things that need to happen. I don't care. And so, I think that, you know, I think the way I judge it is how it feels in my stomach and my heart, not my brain. Thank you. Insane. Wait till you see this, guys. What he made was insane. Anyway, you should talk to the other. Do you know the other Lego dudes? We will. <laughs> Dude, you need to see what he made. It's sick. All right. Let's move it. I love Legos, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Gary. Uh, my name is uh, Joe Kikura. I'm from Staten Island. Uh, first off, I want to say, you know, props to Gary. Um, he just brings, like, this energy and this, like, inspiration to his speaking that's just like unprecedented i just want to thank him from the bottom of my i'm here dude i'm right here thank you man thank you uh, i know i know he I'm confused. Um, it's very meta up in here uh first off um i spent a little bit of time uh, working on wall street and uh the financial industry and um i know that industry is kind of like trapped and like a lot of old ways of doing things and um, I think they're getting really hit hard by a lot of the electronic uh, trading uh, platforms but on the same token I think there's a lot of room for like one-on-one -on -one communications with your, your FA and your broker and um, just from someone coming from that industry how would you apply your concepts and your teachings to something like that industry? So you know it's funny to be watching you Asked that question with Mitch, I don't know if you see him right in front of you, um, who I think is execute, you know, literally, uh, my answer to your question is go hang out with Mitch for 15 minutes and have a coffee after this. I think it's super easy. Technology is the gateway drug to human interaction. Period, that story, I believe that. Like, he, like we will be robots eventually, I firmly believe that. <laughs> I, I, I'm not joking, I, I fully believe that. Now, it's in my own mind, I really hope I don't see it, because it's weird, like, I think it would like brain twist. Like, it's crazy to think that. Like, I mean hardcore robots, like straight up. You know, like, <laughs> but, but until then, I think that there's plenty of room for that. I think the problem is there's too many old school folks that are like, nothing beats a handshake and a one-to-one -one meeting, and they don't use the technology. It's much like the way I brand it. You know, Andy's sitting here. Andy does a lot of the quant, you know, growth hacking, like build the audience stuff. Like, I think that I rely too much on just branding content. If I could do Wine Library TV all over again, the show would be 50X the success it was because I did nothing right from a tech standpoint distribution. It was just word of mouth PR. It just crushed quality content wise. But you know, with technology in place, you should use it. And so I think that of course there's human interaction. Of course there's content like this that can play in every sector. Obviously there's legal ramifications in that world, but all of them have. But I think, I think the more interesting question is, I think there's far more of the reverse, to be honest with you. I think there's far more, more of the emerging trend of people that are still in power places that don't realize there's tech that can scale them and bring them to a different level. Okay. Cool. Thank hey, you, Gary. My name is Mina Sleeve, um, founder, of yes, sir. Um, founder of Aspire. Aspire is a productivity community for millennials. So I'm trying to get millennials, Generation Z, to be more productive. Love um, it. So I know that you work 16, 17, 18 hours a day, 19 hours, depending on who said they work more, you work more. That's right. Um, so 25 hours a day, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is, especially for my audience, how are you that productive? Like, how do you do this every single day? Well, I think we have to define productive, because it's interesting to Garrett's question, right? Like, you mean, how am I actually 
physically executing that many. I, I would argue that I'm not so outrageously productive. So I guess the first question. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. break it. Let's break it down. So I guess the first question would be, what is your definition of productivity? Is it hustle? Because every time I think about productivity, I just think about. I think hard. results. Okay. You know, like when I think of productivity, I think about results, and then I think about short-term results and long-term results. Like, I feel like the Ask Gary V show was a productive venture because I'm very humbled right now that all of you came here today, and it makes me super duper happy. Right? Yeah. I can also think it's productive because multiple companies have now paid me instead of going and publicly speaking because I can't make every event. They've actually paid me for a custom version of the Ask Gary V show. So that was productive. I get paid a lot of money for that. That seems pretty cool. I like that. I also think it's productive because my next book that comes out in February is going to be called Ask Gary Vee. And the whole thematic around it is that, so that's going to be productive. So there's a lot of different ways to, it depends on how one defines productivity, number one. Um, to me, it's the output. And so you guys heard insight into another thing, right? This seven person team is giving me a blueprint that I'm pushing against to try to figure out a bigger business model. I mean, look. My marketing activity for Wine Library was productive because I grew my family business to a big business. It also became the output of my learnings that became the foundation of my personal brand, which became the beacon to building the fastest growing social digital agency ever. Right? Like, so like, I'm always I'm, I'm doing things that people feel are not scalable in the moment that I find to be very scalable if you're willing to look at them in a five to 10 year window. Got it? Yeah. Like, was it productive for me to take that meeting with Chris Desi when he randomly emailed me and said, hey, will you take this meeting? And I said, sure, which then led to a 15 minute, I'm just gonna pay forward to this kid moment, which I love to do, because you never know. Well, in this time, I didn't know, because it led to he being one of the early employees at Buddy Media, which was a company Mike Lazaro had, and I will tell you that that led to free office space at Wine Lot for Vayner Media when we started it, in the conference room at Buddy Media. It also led to me giving a quote to Mike Lazaro for Buddy Media where he gave me warrants to his company, which later sold for a billion dollars to Salesforce. So I made seven figures on a quote to a website. So I call that productive for that 15 minute meeting. But it also led to a friendship that has become one of the core friendships for Lizzie and I. And this Saturday night, I got to spend time with a very small group for his oldest son's bar mitzvah and the speech that the son gave and the speech that Mike gave is something that is engraved in my heart for the rest of my life. I call that productive. But then there's a billion 15 minute meetings that I take where the kid's a piece of shit and nothing good happens. <laughs> so when you play it in a net net game, I think that people are overthinking their at bats, right? And I think intent matters. I think people are trying to be too technically sound, too, they're not allowing for serendipity. And serendipity is where all the magic is, my friends. All of it. Thank you.